going to talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the way that autotrophs, like plants, make energy. Autotrophs are self-feeders. They sustain themselves by producing their organic molecules from carbon dioxide and other inorganic raw materials obtained from the environment. Heterotrophs, on the other hand, must consume organic compounds produced by other organisms. The first thing that we want to learn is that photosynthesis converts light energy to the chemical energy of food. We're looking at figure 10.3 from our textbook and we want to locate the stroma, the thylakoid, the thylakoid space, the inner membrane, and the outer membrane of the chloroplast. Looking at our picture, we can see the chloroplast, and notice that it has a double membrane, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Within the chloroplast, we have stacks of thylakoids. Thylakoids, thylakoids are little, are little sac-like packets that have in their membrane all of the proteins that are required for the light reactions in photosynthesis. The liquid inside of the chloroplast is the stroma, and each stack of thylakoids is re referred to as a granum. Chloroplasts are found mainly in mesophyll cells of leaves. If you remember when we learned about the palisade parenchyma or the palisade mesophyll, these columnar cells that contain many chloroplasts, that's where we're going to find them. The process of photosynthesis can be neatly divided into two sets of reactions light-dependent reactions and the Calvin cycle or what's commonly known as the dark reactions. We won't use the term dark reactions, preferring instead to use the term Calvin cycle. The light-dependent reactions occur first and require an input of water and light. They produce three things. The oxygen we breathe, NADPH, and ATP. These last two products of the light reactions are then consumed during the second stage of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle. These reactions will need carbon dioxide, NADPH, and ATP as inputs to produce sugar. The NADP, NADPH is recycled as NADP+, because the hydrogen atom has been removed from it during the reduction of CO2 to make sugar. The ATP will be recycled as ADP with the inorganic phosphate that's been removed from it. These cycle back through the light reactions and these necessary products for the Calvin cycle are produced again. Photosynthesis is an oxidation reduction reaction that transfers an electron from water to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide becomes reduced and water is the reducing agent. A reduction of carbon dioxide, because these electrons are carried in hydrogen atoms, leads to the production of sugar. The general reaction for photosynthesis showing only the net consumption of water is 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O plus light energy in the form of photons to yield glucose C6H12O6 plus oxygen. 
You might also see the reaction for photosynthesis shown including the water on both sides, and that might be shown like this. 6CO2 plus 12H2O plus light energy equals C6H12O6 plus 6H2O plus 6O2. The main thing to get from both of these equations is that CO2 is reduced by the addition of hydrogen atoms to form glucose, and this requires light energy. The absorption of light, absorption of photons, lifts electrons from inner to outer orbitals, elevating molecules from the ground state to an excited state. The energy in a mole of photons depends on the wavelength of the light that's exciting it. The energy required to shift electrons varies for different molecules. Therefore, molecules absorb specific wavelengths of light. Energy from excited molecules can be re-radiated at, at a lower wavelength, or in the case of chloroplasts, transferred to electron carriers. Photosynthetic pigments are molecules with chromophores, which are functional groups capable of absorbing light. Chlorophyll contains a porphyrin ring that absorbs light and a hydrophobic tail, which anchors it to the chloroplast membrane. There are three types of chlorophyll that we're going to be concerned with. Chlorophyll A, which is present in all oxygen producing photosynthetic organisms. Chlorophyll B, which is present in higher plants and green algae, and chlorophyll C, which, or carotenoids, which are found in brown algae, diatoms, and photosynthetic protozoa. There are also accessory pigments, which broaden the range of absorbed light, able, able to stimulate photosynthesis, and also protect the photosynthetic molecules from reactive forms of oxygen. Here we're looking at figure 10.9 from our book, and at the top we see the absorption spectra. The absor absorption spectra shows the wavelengths of light best absorbed by each of the three types of pigment. The action spectrum below plots the rate of photosynthesis versus wavelength of light. The resulting action spectru spectrum for chlorophyll A resembles but does not match exactly its absorption spectrum. This is partly due to the fact that the absorption of light by accessory pigments such as chlorophyll B and carotenoids contributes to photosynthesis as well. Here we're looking at figure 1017 from your book, which shows the light reactions and chemiosmosis and the organization of the thylakoid membrane. Right now we're going to focus on the idea of the excitation of electrons by light and the travel of those electrons through an electron transport chain. We're going to start by talking in the next video about photosystem 2 and the electron transport chain associated with it. Then we'll talk about photosystem 1, where light rejuvenates the electron that's come from the first electron transport chain, and the energy of that electron is used to create NADPH, another product needed for the Calvin cycle. As electrons travel along the electron transport chain, protons are pumped from outside of the, from the stroma into the thylakoid space, giving it a high proton concentration and a low pH. These protons have only one way of leaving the thylakoid space, and that's through ATP synthase. The passive th flow of protons through ATC ATP synthase drives the phosphorylation of ADP, forming ATP. In our next video, we're going to talk specifically about how light's absorbed by photosystem 2 and what happens to that electron before it enters photosystem 1.